Um, so hi, my name is Nabil. So I'm a solutions engineer, as uh, as well as Alain at GitHub. Um, so I first, before diving right into the the presentation and into the demo, uh, I'd like to present first briefly what I do at GitHub, is GitHub Actions, and then we'll dive into like a demo. Um, <coughs> so. Basically, as a solutions engineer, I technically assist on the on the sales side on the South EMEA region. And what we sell is GitHub Enterprise. Has any one of you heard of GitHub Enterprise or use GitHub Enterprise? I know you do. N do you? Okay. Okay. Perfect. So um, basically, it's the enterprise offering uh, of of GitHub. So it comes as GitHub Enterprise Cloud and GitHub Enterprise Server. I'll be very brief on that one. But ba basically, GitHub Enterprise Server is like github.com, the same UI packaged as a VM and um, VM on-prem. And there is GitHub Enterprise Cloud, and uh, you can, GitHub Enterprise Cloud is basically the private space of the company on github.com, and uh, they can manage their code with organizations and uh, repositories, as you know. And then you can connect and unify the administration with GitHub, uh, with GitHub Connect, so have a unified search across GitHub Enterprise Cloud and GitHub Enterprise Server. And um, yeah, because when a client buys GitHub Enterprise, they have access to both uh, GitHub Enterprise Cloud and GitHub Enterprise Server. Um, enough about the sales speech. Uh, so let's dive into GitHub Actions. So since the acquisition um, of uh, from Microsoft, basically GitHub has been. Um, um, but first, what GitHub Actions was designed and thought as a way to automate GitHub. So, for example, whenever I have an issue, I want to have automatically generate a comment or something like this. Or when I have a pull request which is open based on the file which is changed in the pull request, I want to have a special label. For example, um, it touched like a file in src slash main, for example, and I want to have like a main label. Um, and we have a lot of, um, of uh, actions that have been written into that space. But then, from the community, we had a lot of like um, a lot of traction and asking for this to become like a CI/CD platform. And this is when, um, with um, so, how is it? So I want to just emphasize first how is it different and what is like the value proposition of GitHub Actions and why would you use GitHub Actions instead of like something else, basically. So first off, it's fully integrated with GitHub, so it works on the cloud. You don't have to manage any infrastructure. And um, then the second thing is it can respond to any GitHub event. So the GitHub events are issues or deployments, and um, you have a lot of them, and you can look at the documentation. I'm not going to list them all. Um, the community-powered workflows is the most important uh, to me because what GitHub is doing here is like bringing basically the community, which has, you can reuse uh, GitHub Actions. So for example, we have open source actions from uh, from HashiCorp, like uh, writing about Terraform, for example. So you can just reuse this action, and uh, since an action is like a function, you have input and outputs, you can just supply the right inputs and give you then the, the output by using this open source one. Um, and that's a big change. Instead of like just copy-pasting from another repository the, the file and then just modifying and tweaking some values, you can just reuse and it's, it's clean and tidy and it's managed for you. So the code of the, of the action, you, you don't have to maintain it and you can choose which version. We'll see that, but which version of the <coughs> action you, you want to use. But reusing something that someone else has done. Um, any platform, any language, and, and any cloud. So it's very agnostic as GitHub being a platform and open so is uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions. Um, so that's it. Uh, so now I'm going to dive into a, a demo that I'm going to I'm going to present. So basically, um, the presentation about the demo. So what I want to say is like it's an incremental demo. Um, so it's done step by step. So I'm going to present first the steps. Um, so this was this is about first the uh, all the open source actions that you can find on the marketplace. Um, and for example, uh, there's a huge reuse them. Um, as I was, uh, what I was saying was like uh, the, this demo is incremental, and these are the steps that we are going to follow. So first, we're going to see how to build like very basic workflow, um, and we are going to take the opportunity about this to talk about what is the workflow, what's the definition of a workflow, what's the definition of a step, and uh, how to define a workflow. This kind of thing, really setting the ground. Uh, to understand how is uh, how does GitHub a uh, action work, 
Then we want to see how to build like on different operating systems, so OS X, Linux, and Windows, and uh, how easy it is with GitHub Action to do that. Um, then to see how to save artifacts. So for example, when you build, um, you, you do some testing, you have some, um, for example, logs, but it's not like an artifact that you want to deploy to production, but it's an intermediate artifact that you still want to analyze. So how can you pull it from this pipeline without like SCP to the, to the, um, to the build farm or finding the proxy and these kind of things. Um, and then how to push to GPR. So uh, just an example of pushing like an artifact to, um, to GitHub package registry, which is the equivalent, like it's a binary storage, like Artifactory or Nexus repo. And then how to cache dependencies to make our build faster. So not going to uh, Maven Central every time, but like caching it, caching it locally. And if the pom.xml doesn't change, we just fetch the one which we already downloaded from the internet. Yeah, so let's dive right in. Uh, so I'm just gonna sit. So let's look at, um, at first about how to create um, just a basic, a, a basic workflow. So um, here is the diff that we prepared for that. Um, so what we can see here is that we have, th we created one file, which is a YAML file. And here we can see that we have a .github slash workflow slash branch dash build dot YAML. And this is the convention to, to define a, a workflow is like a workflow is one YAML file under this, this folder. So you can have several workflows uh, in one repository and um, which will be executed after a trigger. So any, on any event of GitHub, it will, uh, it will listen to this event and then trigger the series of steps that you, um, that you, that you described. So let's dissect a bit this, um, this diff. So here we have the name, of the, um, the name of, of the workflow in order to find it more on the execution panel that we'll see just after that. Um, then here we have the on, so which defines the, the trigger, basically, on which event should I trigger this. So here, um, here we decided to trigger it on push. Uh, so whenever I have a push on a branch which is not master, so I want to branch ignore master, I want to trigger curl, and within its job, the steps are run in sequence. So here I have only one job, which is this job build, but I could have several of them. Um, so then a job is composed of a name, um, which is same thing to find it on the execution panel that we'll see. Then we have the runs on. So runs on is the VM that you choose to run on your, um, your pipeline. So here we, we decided to choose the Ubuntu 18.04 VM. Um, you can use Mac OS and Windows. We'll see that in the next step. Um, so once we've set that, we can define these steps. And these steps are run in sequence. And if one fails, basically, the other will not run. So what I want to do is like first set up uh, JDK 1.8. And here, <coughs> here the uses is the action that it uses. And here what can we can see is like if we go to github.com slash actions, you will see like this setup dash Java action which has been written for us. And we are just reusing it. And as I was saying in the introduction, I am choosing the version V1. So I could choose like version 1.1.3, uh, for example. And as I was saying, like an action is like a function, it takes input and gives outputs. And the with here enables us to really supply the input into the action. So here with Java dash version 1.8, so I'm just supplying Java version 1.8 so that it can just set it up. So then the next step would be the checkout. So I'm just bringing the code from github.com into the VM where I'm executing this workflow. Uh, I'm using still an open source action and then the step afterwards is just to test and package and I'm running NVN package uh, war. So uh, I don't know if you have any, any question, <coughs> sorry, any question about this, uh, this workflow definition, which is pretty basic and what is the workflow and so on and so forth. Okay, great. So now let's see how, uh, let's see how on the execution, how, do, how does it look like basically. Um, so this is the next step. So here is how the uh, actions tab uh, look like. Here we have basically the, the workflows. So for example, here we have uh, build test. Here's the name that we find here, uh, build test. So if I had several workflow, I would have a list of items here. Um, and then if I do each workflow here, sorry, if I have each workflow here, build test and package, this is one step. <coughs> uh, Exactly, and then on this step I have these jobs, and this is pretty familiar, like the dark background, 
and uh, what we have is basically live logging here it's already executed but we have basically live logging and we have the time it takes for every uh, for every step um, in time what we did is uh, we built our application so here we check out the code we can see that it's basically doing a git pull then here we did a test and package um, so just MVN package so it goes to Maven Central fetches the dependencies and then sorry and then here is just complete job um, yeah so can we dive into that the next step now or do you have any question about this step okay let's dive into the next step so here this is done building an application which needs to run on OS X and on Windows and I want my pipeline to run on these three um, on these three steps. Um, so this is pretty easy with GitHub Actions uh, with a feature which is called a matrix build. So here the diff seems pretty big, but basically what we added, what we changed, is this part here. So instead of like runs on hard coded like Ubuntu 18.04, we are going to parameterize this and add a matrix.os and then in the strategy here I will put a matrix with two different values so what it will do it will basically execute an Ubuntu 18.04 across all these versions of Java and basically you'll just put the parameter here of matrix.java and then there is a, as well matrix.os here it is exactly um, this strategy fail fast false is like if a step it's it's just a custom thing. Like if if a, if a step fails, I don't want it to uh, to impact like others. But this is it. Um, so pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about this. No. Nope. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, so here is the exactly. So here is the the execution. So this will be done in the execution of every done in parallel because it's like def different jobs. Right. So um so then what we can see here is like here is one execution with 1.7 and here an execution. I'm not going to do them all, but like Ubuntu 1.8. Let me do another one for macOS here, and then here is macOS 1.8. Um, so that's it's pretty easy to do just the, the, the matrix build just wanted to, to show that um, let's so if you have if you don't have any other questions here yep yep send it to a package registry if you want so you have like since it's, it, it executes it like uh, in a VM you can just you can have a step to send it somewhere else and uh, we can just uh, get this uh, get this back. Uh, there is like <coughs> we we're going to see the next one with save artifact that you can use, and then you have a, a drop down, and you can just download it by clicking on the on the stuff. Also, uh, if you do a uh, code release, yep, you can uh, publish the, the, the artifact on the release. Uh, uh, yes, by re uh, using like the the API, for example. The what? Sorry. Go with user, uh, project. Okay. Uh, go project. Okay. Yeah, as long as they have a CLI, you can do basically. Yes, you can do basically whatever you want. Okay, so if you have the GitHub action, it's even better. Yeah, you can just use their action. Absolutely, hundred percent. Yep. All right. Perfect. Um, so that was it for the matrix build. And this, the question, uh, makes us just go smoothly into the next step. Thank you for that. It's the saving of artifacts. So um, basically here, what we're going to do, it will be very straightforward. We'll just use small diff here. Um, what we do is just that. So um, I'm saving the artifact by using the, um, the action upload artifact. And I give them the parameter of the name of how I want to save it. So uh, matrix.os, uh, matrix Java, and, ma and GitHub SHA. Um, so this is provided by GitHub by default, uh, the SHA. And uh, then the path is a dot folder. So, uh, so the folder that I'm currently in. And um, this will have the effect to just creating a, a drop down 
here in the artifacts. So if we look at the previous one, we didn't have this. Um, we didn't have this here artifacts. Um, and then just clicking on it, I just download it basically, and I can retrieve from the virtual machine from the pipeline into my uh, my local machine. And um, since I mean all the team will be using GitHub, you can just um, any any member of the team can just download it pretty easily. So even for communication um, perspective, it's, it's really nice. Um, pretty straightforward. I don't know if you have any questions here. Yeah. So the virtual machines, you can't customize it, but uh, you can use your own container. So I, I don't have this in the demo, but what you can do is like supply your own image, your own Docker image, in which uh, it, will, it will run. So instead of being a virtual machine, it will be a container uh, based off an image that you design with your Docker file. So you can provide the Docker file to GitHub and use your application? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of like control of what you want to have into your container. Uh, you're not attached to Azure uh, by any means. So the thing is that here you have self-host. So this runs on GitHub um, on GitHub servers. What you can have is like the self-hosted runners, uh, where uh, basically you just run a binary and uh, on your own machine, and the execution will be done on your machine. So and then this runner, since it's a binary, it's pretty easy to download. You just you can put it on AWS, uh, Azure, wherever you want on your own VPS or wherever you want. Yeah? So I guess that those runners is to be in secret if you want to put into some other like that. so the secret management there is a secret I think we'll see that in the next step. Um yeah we will see that in the next step. Uh, here when pushing to GPR I'm just spoiling, but you can. Uh, I'll show you how. But you can have like uh, a safe way of um, of managing secrets uh, at the repo level. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't hear. Yeah? Yeah. In the what, sorry? In the side. Yep. So like here, basically? Cypress, for instance, where you do some uh, video recording of, of your user testing, this, this could be uploaded as well. So whatever you want to look at after the build um, to, to double check what happened, uh, you, can, you can upload that. And we're going to keep it for a, long amount of, uh, a, a, a healthy amount of days. Uh, and so you can look at that after. So just to define the path or to find the Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just define the path, and, and, and as you using the uh, action slash upload artifact, so this is the parameter, that's it, and then it's uploaded. Is there any in the you can use? Yes, there's a limit. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I'm <laughs> just kidding, yeah. I, I don't remember, but it's, it's uh, pretty high, it's like several gigabytes.
Well, you want, yeah, uh, okay. yeah. I mean, if, if you want, if you want to push somewhere else, I don't know if we have an example of that uh, where we use directly uh, the command line uh, for GPR. We no, no, for it? anything like uh, you know the shell one. Uh, maybe. I think we have because you could always just run a shell command like SCP, you know, or FTP or whatever you want, uh, and yeah. and yeah. you can push. You know what? I don't have it. I'll send it. Oh, you mean you mean if you have to go through the firewall and everything? I mean, either you whitelist uh, our agent pools, because we can provide you the IP address, the IP ranges of our agent, and so you, you might want, you could configure your firewalls to trust these IPs, or you uh, use your own. Uh, your 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 own agent that you're running locally uh, in your infrastructure as well, or An action that can uh, you be used to upload to S3, and then and then you do that that way as well if you want. But I mean there are plenty uh, plenty of options. It really depends on what your constraints are. Any other question? No? All right. Um. So yeah, we presented that. So that's the drop down to save the artifacts. Um, let's go. So then, yes. Yeah, so the save artifacts is done. So um, let's look at how to push to GitHub package registry. So R three or Nexus repo within GitHub a binary storage basically. Um, so in order to push to to GPR, so here is a lot of uh. Yeah, it's a lot of lens code, but it's pretty easy. Basically, what uh, what we are doing here is um, is building the Docker image, okay, in a new step. And I just wanted to share to show here that you can have a condition uh, in order to skip a step, which can give you more flexibility. Um, so here, for example, I'm I just wanna I just wanna build Docker image if uh, Ubuntu is 1804 if the OS is Ubuntu 18.04 and the Java version is 1.8. Um, then, as we were saying, like, just a shell, yeah, it's, a, it's just uh, like shell commands, and here we, we can see that, like, Docker builds, and this is the command you would use even locally to, to build a Docker, um, to build a Docker, a Docker file, basically. Um, and then we have the push to package registry, which is what, what is interesting here. Uh, still, the if, the condition, here uh, we have we can set environment variables and we have the secret management here. So let's um, yeah let's finish this and then go and look at how the secrets are managed. Um, so here in order to run what we do, we just log into docker.package.github.com, which is the package registry of uh, of GitHub. Uh, we just push the image. We push the GitHub underscore repository and the name of the artifact is bookstore. And if we go to um, Packages. So if I go here, I open just a new tab. I will go to packages here, and we'll just we'll just find it here, basically. Um, so we have the we have the binary which is pushed to the the Docker uh, package registry. Um, then something pretty important is the secret management, so that you avoid putting your secrets into files and leaking them, which is uh, which is very important. Um, so in an encrypted way here, if you go to settings on your on on your repo, you will find uh, it's an encrypted secret management. So here I have Azure credentials, GPR token. This is the one I'm using, and uh, labeler token, which I mean, yeah. So uh, it's a, just a key value storage, and it's encrypted. The name of the key and the value of the key. Um, that's it. I don't know if you have any. Any questions about uh, about this section? Secret management pushing to so the the secret management is at repo level now, and we're working on putting it like at the organization level. Um, yep. All right. Awesome. Yeah, I mean you will have both. If you want like the same secret across the whole organization, if you want if it's only on the repo, you'll put it on the repo level. And we have an API coming to set the secrets automatically as well. 
to, to make it easier. Yep, absolutely. <coughs> Thank you. So, let's dive into the next and last step, which is how to cache dependencies. So usually when you build, you have dependencies, um, and here it's uh, Maven, Maven dependencies uh, in the Java world. So what we want to avoid doing, every, I can see that it takes me 16 seconds, and every time across the demo, I was going through Maven Central here, downloading from Central. So I'm going over the wire, maybe to the US or to any other location, I don't know, but it takes time, right? Uh, and I'm doing it once, so I have them locally, but I still go over the internet and fetch them again. So what I want to do is caching them. Um, so what I'll do is use this open source, um, open source action, which is called cache. And I need to supply a few arguments. <coughs> so here is the path to so the data I want to cache. So uh, in, I don't know if you're familiar with Maven, but basically when it downloads your dependencies, it stores them into a uh, slash repository. And basically, I want so this data, uh, all these dependencies, I want to attach them to a key so that I can just find them back in the cache. Um, <coughs> and here, so I find them, so runner.os, so based on the operating system uh, I'm using, the Java version I'm using, and here I'm putting the hash files um, of the pom.xml. So basically, pom.xml um, defines the set of dependencies that I'm downloading. So what I want is like, if the dependencies change uh, to invalidate the cache and this key would be different. Yeah. And, and here it, it looks a little bit complicated because we are doing a matrix build with several combination for each uh, environment. But you know, a lot of people are using just one environment, one, one version of Java, and so it, that would be a lot simpler as well. But yeah, we, we try to make it more complicated to what we're usually doing. <laughs> So you will look smart. <laughs> when it's complex, you look smart. It's nice. Um, and then we have the restore keys. So basically, when I have a cache miss, what is the best guess and what is the closest data? And here we can see that we just removed the hash files of pom.xml so that I mean uh, I can find like the um, closest uh, the closest um, data possible, basically. And if we look now. Uh, so after caching the dependencies here, the test and package we divided by two. Uh, we divided by two the execution of this step. It was 16 seconds, and I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to um, to Maven Central because I didn't change my Pomrad XML, which is what I wanted basically. And, and that's pretty important because so um, you have like if you have an open source project, you get uh, three minutes uh, to compile and to, I mean to build. So uh, there is a lot of free tiers that that are offered by GitHub Action, so you can use it for free. Uh, but if you are doing a lot and lots and lots of builds, you might, ex uh, first of all, it's annoying to have to wait long to get the build results, but also you might, you know, uh, go above the threshold and then you might need to have to pay for something uh, that you could avoid. For. So um, it's, it's a good idea, if you can, to, uh, to avoid that. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think the, the demo is over. So... Um, as a sum up, basically, I would say that uh, the pros of this is like the fact that it's integrated into GitHub and the fact that it's on the cloud, and uh, the open source, the open source actions, which enables us to just we we saw that, for example, for the caching dependencies or for um, saving to saving the R leverage what other people did, and which has been the strength uh, of GitHub uh, from the beginning, basically, um, and bringing that to the CI/CD space, it's really uh, it's really exciting. Uh, this product is evolving, uh, and a lot of investment is put to it, so just stay tuned. And uh, I think a lot of exciting stuff uh, is coming. Um, I don't know if you have anything to well, add. Ca can we go back on the Marketplace page? Let's go. Because there were, I mean, there were <coughs> some questions that were interesting about multi-cloud. Yes, Marketplace, and so you get the filter here by actions. Then can you type AWS, for instance? 100%. All right, so... Uh, I think they're not listed. Four? Well, uh, the AWS offici the official AWS actions. Well, first of all, what we here see, you get the AWS update S3 action. So that's one way of getting, you know, uploading things somewhere. Uh, I have an idea. If we create a new, no, 
it will be a suggestion if we create a new workflow from here it will yeah be a suggestion. sometimes there's too many things over there so <laughs> we cannot find exactly the one we're looking because um what well, can you just google that maybe github actions aws or something else. probably we're going to uh, stumble upon that yeah there you go that should be that one uh y yes yeah no no go back go back go back here the link go back scroll down yes okay this one yeah this one so so that's the uh so as you see um the great thing with github actions um uh, is we we bring in the same philosophy that what you've seen in the open source world for many many years so people are doing it for us you know we don't have to make actions to integrate with aws we don't have to make actions with to integrate with google cloud uh, we 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 made something that people can leverage and create their own actions. So here you see the AWS team creating an action, allowing you to deploy to AWS. Same thing for Google. Google created the action to do that. A and what we all is to have all all the different vendors in the open source world or in the DevOps world or wherever uh, to create their own actions. So you will find Terraform actions as well uh, created by Ashicorp. So they, they are bringing you the wrapper to their ecosystem that you can plug directly into GitHub. So that's a, that's a great way, um, and that, that's the best thing, right? You don't have to do it, we don't have to do it. They are specialized, they know what they're doing, and they're doing, a, they're doing it for us. And you don't have to maintain it, and yeah. that is as well crucial. Like. But yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a very good point. So if you can go back to the, uh, the YAML file, because that's something we, I think we didn't really show. Uh, we look at the s yeah the source file directly. Let's let's look at the war file if we can. Uh, no. That would directly go directly into the code maybe. Uh, let's go to in the dot GitHub. Yeah. Yeah. Take the last one. Then okay. To dot GitHub for close. Yeah. Stop it. Stop here. So for. One thing we, we haven't seen is um, you can have multiple uh, pipelines, you can have multiple workflow in your in your repository. So, and each of them can listen to different events. So you not you don't have to put everything uh, with ifs 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 uh, in a, in one single file. You can have so many of them, and some listening to the same exact thing. Uh, if we look at one of them, that one since we didn't open any it. of them. Yeah. So here you see. We are so that syntax here is very important because what we what we're saying is that we're going to look into the organization. There is a repo called checkout, and we're going to use the the v1. So there is a git tag that specifies the exact version that you want to use. Um, and here, for instance, it's the Azure organization. There's an actions uh, repo. Within that actions repo, there is a login folder. And within that login folder, but we, we, we tie to master, which means here, if they are changing the code of the actions, you are using a new, you are executing a new piece of code, right? So moving forward, you're going to be, uh, you're going to have to be a little bit vigilant about that because you're giving that actions your secrets, right? You're giving them access to some stuff. So you, the great thing is they are open source, so you can look at them. It's kind of useless to look at them if they can change afterwards, right? And without notice. So here, uh, one best practice would be to uh, put a SHA-1. So you say exactly which commit you want to execute. Unless it's a trusted one, because it could be also in a private repo in your organization, and then it's trusted. Then you could run the latest version of master. But if you're using a public one from somebody you don't know, then it's safer to use a, to use a SHA-1. If it's a vendor, I mean, if it's AWS, I mean, can they be trusted? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you trust them, you can you can do that. But yeah, just just be mindful of that. You know, it's um, it's one of the things that uh, that that we need to be uh, careful about. But yeah. Yeah. So the uh, the actions organization, it's us. Our actions, it's us. Yeah. So it's here basically. If I go to github.com here, yeah, slash action, slash yeah. actions here. So this is the repository where the organization, yeah. the organization, sorry, sorry, and, then and all these are actions that we have we have developed. And if I find the checkout here, here it is. 
and you can write your own actions as well. Yeah. So you can have your own like within the company, you have like an organization like actions, and you can just run the, old, the all your own actions, and you provide them to the rest of the company so that is standardized, and you can manage the actions for the whole company if you have, if you're working for a big corporation, for example. Yeah. There are, there are two ways to provide actions. Uh, you can provide uh, a Docker file. So you, the implementation of your actions could be within a Docker, uh, be JavaScript based. So uh, I mean, either you use JS or, or TypeScript, doesn't matter. But uh, we we have like a, a node runtime that will execute that action as well. So you can you can create your own and, and publish it uh, directly on GitHub. I mean, it could be if it's a public repository, it's available to everybody basically. And you can also ask to be listed in the marketplace if you want. Yep. Maybe there is an action for it. Um, well, if you look into the marketplace, you will find, I mean, the Ansible action. Because, I mean, we don't like, yeah. Current playbook. Uh, so then you can use the uh, command line uh, to execute the playbook. I mean the r the run the run playbook uh, CLI. So I don't have to rewrite the entire pipeline. It's already written in Ansible, but I want to execute that. Uh, yeah, like um, I th I think I have. Um, did I have an example in I think that? the end? It's just a Docker container, so you can yeah. anything. So as long as you have the environment, you can have you have the command line as if you were just Docker exec dash it and then being into the container, so it just works. Like basically, yeah, you commit the uh, playbook in your repo and you just run it locally. Yeah. yeah. There's no reason it doesn't work. Hmm. Trust us, it works. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, honestly, I don't have the details. Uh, maybe you yeah. do have. No, exactly. But I mean, um, we. I mean, we, we keep the cache somewhere. I mean, the VM doesn't stay up and, and wait for you to come back. I mean, we we when when your build is finished, then the 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 VM is totally recycled. But we've we've stored that somewhere in the storage, and that we can restore later. You mean if, if, if for the caching part of things, uh, it, it's caching, right? So it's, it's, I mean, it should be m the use case is really for technical files that you're going to need to uh, use again for the next build. provide that even for free. I mean, we, we, we manage that. So the, the, the cache is attached to your to your account, I mean, or to your organization account, or wherever you are executing the uh, the um, the pipeline. And I mean, it's part of our job to make sure that we don't mix <coughs> everybody's cache. It's, uh, and we can blame it. Yeah. It's I mean, it's it's investment on our side, obviously. Uh, it, it's costing money, but that's you know. That's like your your the, the repos we've been hosting on GitHub.com for the past twelve years, it's costing us money as well. But you know how many repo you have, you know what is the limit for each repo, and you can just uh, yeah do the dimensioning like this basically. So I mean, as, as long as as long as you're not uh, exceeding the free tiers, I mean, you're free to use our solution <coughs> for to the extent of what we provide. You had another question. Mm -hmm. 
do you have any kind of mechanism to interact with the workflow during the, I mean, on the execution time? For example, uh, you pass all the tests, and after that you have to press a button to, to deploy, for example, to avoid the continuous deployment in production ready. If we don't have any manual interactions uh, built in yet, it's it's things we are thinking about, but it's not there yet. I'm, I'm not a big fan of manual interactions. Anymore. Me neither. <laughs> Yeah, so you can have dependencies between jobs. So you can say this job depends on this one, this one, and this one, and then basically you have whenever all this finishes, I want to execute that one. This is possible. Uh, dynamic jobs for this. Would I mean, within one job, I read a file, and then depending on the content of that, of that file, I need to start several jobs or not. Um, that's a good question. So that would be that would be possible within the context of one uh, pipeline. Um, one workflow. One workflow, yeah. So you could do that, but you could not. You could not uh, at the end of one workflow have like trigger another workflow. Like you cannot chain workflows. It has to be within the context of one workflow. People jobs and. and and you can uh, set some environment variables, for instance, and these environment variables could be an if to start right. and end of the thing. I don't think that's possible. But prevent people from shooting us in the foot, because that's us at the end of the day who needs to run that. But no, but not because we look w when when you're committing a workflow file. So that YAML file, or you making a change, so it's a git commit, right? But we're looking at what kind of uh, authentication is uh, is being used. So is that an SSH key? Is it a personal access token? What kind of personal access tokens? Uh, like, is it coming from an OAuth app, or is it coming from? We have uh, some like cleverness behind the scene to to you know prevent some weird use cases that we don't want to deal with. Yeah, there was. You want Visual Studio at which place, or is that I can understand the question? I want a Windows image or virtual machine or whatever you use for yeah. Windows. Virtual with machine, yeah. Visual Studio in order to build the plus plus application. Ah, to build it. Okay, cool. So, uh, oh, there you go. Maybe there is. Um, if not, you might have an action which installs it. Anyway, like <coughs> I, I set up JDK, you might. If it's not by default, so that's uh, what okay. what's listed over there. So you get. It's a VM, yeah. Yeah, that's a VM. So it's, it's a real Windows machine, yeah.
or running some CUDA application? Um, I don't know. You, that's a good question. I, I, I haven't tried it. The, if you run that on Windows, I mean, uh, you probably have a, a, a window, a Windows context, context over there. Uh, I, I would not think that the, the, the Linux one has that. Um, let's let's see. Come on, to see. Do you want visual interface for what? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Makes sense. <coughs> I, I, yeah, we will need to double check that. But I mean, sure. what you can do uh, at the end of the day, you can also one of your machines and and use that. So you can run your own agent. And if you're running your own agent, there is no more uh, sense of billing. So, I mean, because you pay you pay for the infrastructure yourself. So you can do whatever you want now. Yeah, you pay for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know about that. That's a good question. We we have to double check that. Yes. Hey, I put up in the enterprise uh, you install yourself in your infra, but uh, using the SaaS solution, it's possible to connect to a VPC, for example, to AWS or whatever. Uh, to do what? Like how? how yeah, for example, to trigger some kind of uh, internal uh, things. You can via HTTP if you want. Uh, you can uh, basically it's just like command lines. So whatever, uh, if you want to have a program which you have the complete freedom. Like it's like just imagine as if you have a shell. If from a shell you can access your VPC, you can do it from this action. If you can't via your shell, uh, you wouldn't be able to do it. Basically, that 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 really comes down yeah. to just having a a machine which have instructions basically. Yeah, we, we not we are not restricting on our side any output. Uh, but then on your side, if you have a BC to, to the, our IP range, and, and whitelist them if you want a, a GitHub Actions run on our cloud to connect back to you. But it's just a network uh, configuration. Yep. Uh, maybe it's related to what we talked before about restrictions of which actions can trigger what actions. Uh, I, have, um, I, I use GitHub um, pages okay. to call this kind of block. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I try to, to run an action that updates the HTML body size, it won't update it, it won't be updated. Yep. So I have to use an upper red book and then that that's exactly because you are using um, the GitHub token environment variable to do the push, and, and that's like GitHub uh, pages uh, doesn't want uh, automated processes to do the update, so there is a limitation of there because because of the kind of tokens. So the solution to, to that is to uh, create a personal access token, the generated GitHub token. You use you you put that personal access token as a secret in your repo, and you use that, and you push doing that. Um, I have. Well, it's locked, but I have um, I've I've done it, so I can show you uh, how it works. Yeah, okay. just don't remember my repo where I'm doing <laughs> that. So, um, you just found an excuse. It's locking. Sorry. Mm.
So yeah. So, well, first of all, that's why I was telling you about like you, if you want to use a a, a SHA one uh, specifically, it's an open source repo, so you you'll be able to uh, to find it. Um, and what I do here. I don't. I haven't worked on that one for uh, quite a while now, so I don't remember exactly everything I've done. Um, uh, so I'm doing the git commit. Yeah, yeah. So that was a different repository, but. Uh, Okay, uh, it's not that one. It's another one. But yeah, I mean, anyway, if you if you do that, like as I say, it, it, it will work. Uh, I have that somewhere else. But this repo, I mean, if you if you want to play with actions, um, I mean, it's still work in progress over there. But um, I created a a cheat sheet, so you can uh, get it in PDF. So uh, action. So you know, it's a GitHub cheat sheet Ooh. generate with a GitHub <laughs> action. Uh, and it's based on uh, Markdown and uh, ASCII doctor. So I just can change the text through a pull request, push it, and it generates a new version of the, the of the cheat sheet. So um, I think it's pretty cool. Any for GitHub actions? Um, there, there is one. I mean, you you get syntax yeah, exactly. highlighting when you are changing. Yeah. I see what you mean. So if you if you um, no, that's not this one. You could zoom out. Here, the file. So here you will have uh, syntax highlighting uh, directly in this environment. So it will uh, it will do that. Yeah, yeah, you have a, 